Welcome everybody out to our essential oil wellness class um, tonight. Um, the topic is develop the power of intuition. Jay's going to talk about what the power of intuition is, um, why we need to develop it, and how we can improve our powers of intuition. Yes. Uh, so the last uh, seven years or so that we've been doing doTERRA, I've seen some amazing changes in people. Um, some people, they come, you know, into my world um, feeling like they, they just want to be healthy. They want to get a couple of oils or say a headache or whatever. And, you know, fast forward a few years and they are, you know, having more spiritual understanding. Uh, one lady tells me she feels like she was asleep and now she's awake and she can see the world in a different way. A friend of mine recently, when I visited Ohio, she said, Jade, who you met five years ago, that was a shadow. You know, I'm me now. So it's sort of like this, they're all developing this spirituality, this um, uh, intuition. So anyways, um, it's really good for us to remember that we're spiritual beings here, having a very important uh, physical experience on earth. Um, and developing intuition will help us uh, develop that spiritual muscle. And um, it's important to, to develop because it connects us with each other and with the divine. Um, and, you know, it's more than just the brains firing at the same time and wiring. It's so much more than that. So that's why I, I like this. I made this picture because I couldn't find the picture that uh, was free. <laughs> but it's like connecting the brains and connecting the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, have you had experience like that, guys, that you can totally make this amazing connection with people, even if it's somebody that you've never met before or that you have a family, a friend that you, you totally feel. And, and then if you contact them, they're like, wait, I was about to call you or I was just thinking about you. It, that's funny, right? Anyone want to share an experience? That's happened to me lots if you think of a specific yeah. experience. That happens to me quite often. Um, this is, there's a sister in my ward, a lady in my ward at, at church. And like we, we started our friendship relationship through text, interestingly enough. And then when I finally met her in person, it was like I knew her. I told her, I said, I don't know how I know you, but I know you. Like you are so familiar to me. And, and she felt the same about me. It was really, really interesting. And then when I met Beth Sundstrom too, it was like an immediate connection. So free and easy. Yeah. And to talk about things that maybe you wouldn't normally talk about with any person. You know what I mean? Anyway, so that's kind of, yeah, it's like cool. an understanding of the spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. That's awesome. And sometimes people think, I'm not, you know, intuitive. I'm not spiritual. No, that's not me. But it's something that we can develop. And I'm encouraging people to. So Debbie Gordon. I, I, I was going to say the same thing, basically, that this happens to me all the time. And I was just recently up in Ogden, and my appointment had fallen through. So I just said a little prayer, who, who else do I know up here that I need to reach out to today, right now? And the person I reached out to was actually my son's birth, birth mother's, or my, my son's birth grandmother. And um, I called her, and she didn't answer, so I sent her a text. And then I drove home. I went ahead and drove back to Jaffer. And um, so when I got home, she called me and said, how did you know I needed your help today? And I, and I told her, I was, just, I was in Ogden today, and, um, you know, my appointment had fallen through, and I just said, Heavenly Father, who do I, who, who do I need to speak, reach out to today? So, you know, what? I love that um, connection. We really can be guided if we ask for it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so wonderful. It's family and it's friends. So I know sometimes I text a friend in Australia, and I'm like, how, is, how are you doing today? And she's like, your timing is amazing. And I thought, I just, I don't know what just came into my mind. Of, and then I thought, I'll just act on that really quickly. Just want to make sure you're loved. You know? And it's like, oh. But it strengthens your faith. It strengthens your intuition every single time you act on it, right? So and there are times where like, we call each other 
Right. And I pick up the phone to call you, and I'm like, I haven't even dialed yet. <laughs> and there you are on the other side of the phone. Well, mouth. I laugh at, you know, the joke that you were about to say. <laughs> so. It's because they're all the same joke. No. <laughs> I just keep on using the same hundred jokes. <laughs> so it's really good to develop this. This is important to take note. Uh, so what is intuition? Um, so according to Mr. Google Dictionary, it says intuition is the ability to understand something immediately without need, the need for conscious reasoning. You know, to be honest, we only use like this 3% of our brains and we, we, you know, squeeze out all the juices out of it when we have all this information um, in our hearts and our gut and our um, spirit that we really can tap into to really help us make quick decisions. And any time we make, these um, intuitive decisions, we're, uh, we are almost always right. Right? Don't you feel that way? I um, taught this lesson at church yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to share now. You taught a lesson on intuition. <laughs> well, it's um, it's called "Let the Holy Spirit Guide." You know it. It's Ronald Rousdown from last conference and talking about being a first responder and listening. And even Joseph Smith said, not, he says, if you will listen the first time, you will be right nine times out of ten. Yeah, that's awesome. That's right. I love it. Um, so I tell people, it's like you aligning your mind, your heart, your gut, and your spirit. Um, so I, I tell people sometimes, I think, just, just touch your heart, touch your gut, and say, does it feel right? And then you just do it. And sometimes it doesn't make sense, but just do it anyways. Um, and then you will come to an understanding of it later after you've made that choice. It's funny because uh, I know that when I, we, I started with doTERRA and I had an idea. I had an idea that God wanted me to do this. And I felt that's how that was right. And I didn't know. I had an idea of what he wanted me to do, but I didn't know exactly the details. And I did it anyways. And I couldn't explain it to my husband. And it sounded really dumb um, because it's like, I feel like I need to do this. And it's like, why? And I thought, uh, I have plenty of reasons I can come up with, but I really don't understand the whole scope of it. Um, but I can see just letting go helps guide and uh, things happen and it's meant to be and you learn. You're taken on a wonderful journey. In the end, um, what it's trying to help us do is to... Um, you know, we, we balance all the heart and mind, the gut and spirit. And then you know, we are led to making good choices which help us live happy, fulfilled life. And that's the goal, right? To live a more happy, fulfilled life. So um, why, why is this intuition important? Okay, It's important so that we can connect to each other and connect to the divine. Um, it, you know, that's like the... Um, the light energy, the light energy helped us connect and be one with each other. And, you know, we always make the right choice um, and we'll always feel happy in the end. Um, and then, of course, we will fulfill our life's ultimate purpose, um, which is to have joy. Uh, so each one of us, I, it's another way of putting it, is a happy meter inside of you. So if you ignore that happy meter, over time you'll feel empty. You really feel empty. You feel um, like you've got no direction. But if you keep um, tapping into and checking into that happy meter within, you know, touch your heart, touch your gut and say, look, I'm not feeling comfortable for some reason or I'm very comfortable. You know, I'll keep, up, um, you know, at this, doing this because I feel good for some reason. Um, you keep doing that. If you feel like this is something that's just not right, it's not sitting right, then change. That's what that happy meter inside of you is, is trying to communicate with you. So that you, engage, that you can, so you can adjust life and um, find happiness. So that's just a different way of looking at intuition. Okay. Um, I'm very grateful that uh, I was able to develop this and it actually, I was forced to develop it really quickly because I have a, an intense desire to help people. Um, and when people ask me, questions sometimes things come to my mind and then when I honor it it uh, reinforces that ability and I honor it over and over again so sometimes I actually see words uh, uh, you know one time I was sitting at the airport and the word frankincense was right across the forehead of this man 
that was sitting next to me. <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to make a conversation with him. And then it, you know, it happened. It was very friendly. And then I mentioned health and mentioned all these things. And then, you know, I said, have you heard of frankincense? And um, then he's like, yeah, is that one of those oils in the Bible? I mean, the, the things that you give to Christ. And I said, it's, in, it's an oil form. Would you like to smell it? And he really liked it. So I don't know why and I don't know how, but I gave him one uh, little sample. Um, anyways, he contacted me later on um, and he thanked me for it. And I don't know what's ha what his life is like, what he's going through in his life. Um, but for some reason, I, I am confident that um, it helped him in some way. All right, so anyone want to say anything? So I have some ideas of how to develop intuition. So it's first choose to be intuitive. The second one is to use essential oils. Um, the third one is be still. Uh, four is be mindful. And five is act. So you're practicing active faith. So we go through each one of these. Um, discuss it and you guys are welcome to just jump in and talk because I'm not like the expert in intuition or anything I just wanted to help people realize that you know, the, the work that we do uh, with the oils and with healing our bodies um, it actually naturally um, develops uh, intuition inside of us so um, you got to choose <laughs> you have the power to choose in any situation um, and sometimes we forget that we have the power to choose. I really like uh, the Viktor Frankl. He says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And within that space, um, you have the power to choose, right? So whatever uh, the stimulus is, you can respond in a way that you've chosen. Um, so you can choose to be intuitive. And what that does is it actually switches the brain on to the intuitive programming. And then it uh, searches for evidence and starts collecting evidence and collect um, experiences to support that program. So as soon as you say, I am intuitive, I'm an intuitive person, um, you'll find that you'll be intuitive very quickly. Okay. And, um, you know, intuition is just a high level of consciousness and uh, you can actually develop it. And so I want to share this here, da 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 the levels of consciousness. Um, it's uh, Dr. David Hawkins, and um, I use this sometimes to help um, people understand where they're at or where their family members are at and where they're operating from. So you see everything in the dark purple. So for those who are listening to this, this is at www.jbalden.com slash developing intuition. Yeah, we'll, we'll explain what it's yeah. what showing here. So it's like a, a just a triangle with the levels of vibration. So it's, it's numbers that go with it, but I feel like the numbers is not as important as um, where you are. So the the low vibrating energy um, is here on the ba the base. So fear, grief, apathy—they're in order. Okay, they're in proper order. They're not in any random order. They, shame is one of the lower, okay, um, energies. And then we have guilt, apathy, grief is a little bit higher than fear, but all that is um, just negative emotions, okay? Um, above that, a little bit higher is pride, anger, and desire. Uh, so those are negative and it causes a lot of hyperactivity um, in our brains. So that's what we call overwhelmed stress, okay? Um, and then in the middle, we have forgiveness, optimism, trust, courage, okay? And um, that helps us be happy and productive. And those are the more positive energy, and that's where a lot of us are. Okay? We're pretty happy, um, pretty forgiving, and pretty optimistic most days. Uh, but we want to develop a higher understanding. So... Um, there's some days that I feel like, wow, that, that's, that's amazing because how did I know all this thing when I don't even know that person? <laughs> how did I know that stuff? Why did I say that stuff to that person? And here they are saying, yeah, well, that's exactly me. Um, because then, you know, you're performing at peak, um, peak performance without stress. 
So that's really interesting. Um, so you guys, everybody can develop this understanding and this intuition. Um, and you know, the higher you go, you, the, the more joy and gratitude. See, look at gratitude where it's at. <laughs> it's next to love. This is why our friend Spike Nard um, is an important oil to love. Because <laughs> sometimes you think, I am grateful, I'm optimistic. But this is about really understanding our situation and truly understanding the, 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 the benefits of it. So part of that, um, the childhood regression uh, therapy that we do is, you know, having a grateful attitude towards your trials and seeing the divine purpose for why you went through that in the first place, right? Why are you suffering or why you suffered this? And once you have that gratitude, um, you, you transcend, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, so, you know, I, I was telling my friends in Pensacola that I finally got um, the voice uh, to write my story. And in the past, I think it's, it's uh, dark, you know, who wants to hear about that anyways? No, um, but now that I see the, and I'm grateful for it, um, you know, I think this is a good thing for people to, to understand so that they can apply that gratitude to their challenges. So, um, you know, have a greater appreciation of why God let me go through all those things. Um, so that's really interesting. And, you know, I am proud to say I like Sandalwood um, and Spike Nard <laughs> because, you know, this helps me gauge where I am. Um, so, you know, you get to this point where we work with synchronicity. In other words, um, that Steve, uh, Stephen Covey, yes, yeah, Stephen Covey uses a synergy or um, interdependency. And another word that we use is being united and collaboration. And that is amazing. We, we are so connected. And this is what I'm talking about when we say, you know, you're, we're intuitive because we, we work like this, um, you know, smooth engine. Okay? And it's, there's extraordinary outcomes that come from that. And we look forward to that. And of course, one of the highest um, vibrations is peace peace because we have joy and gratitude with peace but peace is just a little bit beyond that so guys do you have anything to add to this i just think it's interesting that you have to break through that pride to get to the next yeah that's mm -hmm. right you have to break through that to get to the next level. Yeah. What I understand pride as is, is you're lacking love for yourself. You're protecting self. When you, when really on the other side of that discomfort is comfort, other side of that um, <laughs> in the disease is ease. But we forget and we hold on to it. We hold on to this side and with our understanding, instead of yielding it and surrendering it, and then, huh, oh my goodness. Yeah, like more freedom without the pride yeah 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 that's right that's what holds us back that gets in our way yeah and then i feel like you have you get to know yourself better yeah okay anyone else anything else this is a helpful pattern Go ahead, who was it? I'll share. Yeah. I'll share for a minute. Um, I really believe we can learn this and we can start from ground zero because my business name is Nurturing Instincts. And so I love to nurture that instinctual or that intuitive voice. And um, I've done this with young mothers on many occasions to see what their baby needed. And when you help them, you know, there's no option. You have to tell me what your baby needs. I mean, I, when you basically put it out there and say, you know what your baby needs, um, it's really kind of a, a, a good starting point, but at any rate, I really believe we can learn and we, and we must learn. Yeah. Really to, to move forward and to progress, we must learn to listen to this voice. Yeah. And I will say that in my, in my birthing career, I have learned so much more from the quiet whisperings um, than I ever had in the books, ever. Mm -hmm. That's where truth came. 
one of those quiet whisperings of the Holy Ghost and, and listening to that intuitive voice and then implementing what I had been tutored in. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I have to thank Debbie Gordon for helping me um, because when we first, um, uh, we had our first child and she gave me a quick um, you know, lesson on birthing and intuition. And, you know, it stuck with me because it made sense. And ever since then, I just tried to listen to myself. And, you know, when you ask a question, what does your body need? your body finds answers <laughs> you think oh i didn't know i had that answer inside of me do you want to walk yes do you need a drink Get, you know, where do you want to go next and what do you want to do next and it's how funny and i just came back from a baby shower just uh, before the call and one lady she's she says well you had twins you you must have had a cesarean right and then it reminded me that I said, no, I, I fought the doctor left and right, actually. <laughs> well, because it was like, we're ready for you, we're ready for you. Sign the paper, we're ready for you. But will you in? No, I'm like, wait, wait, my body's saying no. And like, look, your baby's not turned right. And la, 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 all these reasons. And I'm like, but I still feel wrong about it. <laughs> and just when I was about to give up, the nurse says, wait a sec, let me just double check. And I was ready to push. <laughs> and I think, oh my goodness, my body knew. Uh, and, you know, everything turned out perfectly um, just by asking that question, what does my body want and need? So excellent, really good lessons that I learned. Yeah, and with doing the business too, guys, you're going to be guided. Um, so I felt very uh, confident in myself um, because I have a connection, not because I'm intelligent, but I feel like I'll know what to do when I get there. I'll know what to say when I open my mouth. You know, and, I, and that's been the case a lot of times. Um, and it's so exciting because you're like, what's the next adventure? Because I have no idea when Debbie Gordon explained to me, we didn't even have a lot of time to chat. And then I went all the way to Ohio going, what do I do with these soils? And I thought, wait, I have to check in with God and let's just ask him, you know, why not? And I, like Debbie said, I learned so much that the books have never told me. And even when I read books, I think, no, no, I actually get this out of that. You know, or this research, I think I get this out of that. And this is how I'll apply it. And then when I act on it and people heal, I think, whoa, that was cool. Let's try that again. <laughs> and then I record all of my experiences. So that's awesome. So that's the that's important part of it, Jade, is the asking. You know, we, we do have to ask. Yeah. Because, I mean, we all have access to the light. light. And we can receive inspiration um, anytime. But when we ask, then it's more focused, I think. And when we, you know, when I've had assignments to write a program for something or when I've needed to create something, I don't know, just examples, whatever, I don't know. Um, I can ask for that inspiration and then, then I'm given the answer. You know, then I can sit down with my paper, my pen, and I can write and the words that fall out on the page are what need to be there, but it's not because I have them in my brain, you know what I mean? It's not my words that come out, it's, it's uh, you know, from heaven, but um, that's because I asked for that inspiration and then, um, then I'm given that when I need it. So it, just same thing with the business, you know, if we ask for that inspiration, then when the time comes, we will know what to say, hopefully if we're prepared and we're ready. You know, we, we still have to study, we still have to learn, and then we can share that knowledge that we receive with other people. Yeah, that's awesome, Kayla. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it really doesn't come from us. But being connected is so powerful. Uh, you know, connecting to family too. Um, the more I help people with this, the more I see um, unity in families. And especially our family right now with my sister, my brother, and it was just, uh, I, I can't, um, you know, I can't say enough about how much I'm grateful for this because, you know, we sense each other. And when we're blessed here, they're blessed there. And it's funny because the whole boat is lifted. It's so fun. So use essential oils. This is very important. Whether you are aware or not, if you use essential oils, over time, you have to develop this anyways, okay? The people that are super negative, they actually don't like the essential oils. So if you do have a negative friend that, uh, you know, kind of 
kills your life, <laughs> like, like my friends say, um, you know what, if you swear the oils around you a lot, they will say that you stink and they won't want to hang out with you. <laughs> Sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, to ward them away and all the happy, positive people <laughs> say, you smell lovely, I want to sing with you. <laughs> yeah. But three oils, I didn't want to overwhelm everyone. Immortel, because it has a, high, a really good oil, rose, but most of the other oils are fantastic too. Rose has one of the highest vibrations. Um, and, uh, you know, it has frankincense and a few other oils. Smell it. Rub it on your third eye, um, and uh, just like uh, you know, um, all of us were just saying, be open to it. Okay, be open to inspiration. Sandalwood is the oil of sacred devotion, and it's about prayer and meditation. Um, it helps you think clearly, um, so it calms your whole body down, so that you're able to um, have that wisdom. Okay, uh, patchouli is an important oil. I feel. It does very similar things to um, sandalwood, but this is the oil of physicality. It helps you tap into the body and allowing the body to talk to you and um, aligning yourself with the body because the body says stuff too. And sometimes you just say, I have a gut feeling about this. I'm just going to do it. You know, great, do it. Okay, and that's, that's the idea. And if people are not connected to their body, um, they don't have any of those feelings. Their heart is communicating, but they're not listening and they're not feeling. Um, yeah, so you, you've heard it before, hardened heart, heart in the scriptures. And, you know, so this patchouli is important, especially rub it along your spine so if you can get it to the central nervous system. Um, so just making the brain, the body connect so that it can open the communication um, highways. Okay, so use essential oils. Easy peasy. Okay, the next one is be still. So take time out to be still, think and meditate. Uh, the great thinkers of the world spent a lot of time in solitude um, and Jesus Christ prepared himself for 40 days before his ministry. And he went, <coughs> right? Um, so it was funny that I was doing this and then I, I was... Um, listening to David Swartz in The Magic of Thinking Big, and he says, Franklin D. Roosevelt spent much time alone while recovering from his polio attack. Harry Truman spent much time as a boy and an adult alone on a um, Missouri farm, and uh, he says, quite possibly Hitler would have never achieved power had he not spent months in jail alone, so where he had time to construct his you know, scheme plan. But I was thinking, you know, it has to be... Um, Positive, <laughs> positive, managed thinking too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's another thing um, we can think about. So I tell people it's like um, it enhances your intuition when you go uh, without food. So you you fast, okay, for a short time. Um, so it could be for us, we do it once a month uh, for a twenty-four hour period just so we can get connection um, and direction for our life. And um, we're more focused on our spiritual um, abilities and, and um, spiritual muscles, okay? Um, and that helps me improve my intuition, I feel. Um, of course, like the prayer, if you're spiritual, uh, pray, pray as often as you can, um, because that's you communing with the divine, yeah? Anyone want to say anything? Yeah, Jade, um, you were talking about being still. I think that's uh, such a big key. Um, a couple of the things that I can think of, uh, of major decisions that we've made in our life, um, moving up from Ohio back out to Idaho, um, having our par Kayla's parents move into us, were all because of that being still. Um, sitting, being in church and without all the distractions around and, and having those promptings come that said, this is what you need to do. and 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 it, those, those things wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have listened to those if I would have been at home um, doing other things with all the world things going on in your life and just sitting there in a quiet and, and, and being able to, you know, be, you know, in a state where you could, where, where I could receive those. So. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ron. That's exactly right. And don't you feel like 
you get a lot more inspiration when it's like early hours of the morning too, when everything is still. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I actually start work at six in the morning and, um, and, and you can get a lot of time done, done early in the morning without some of those, a lot of distractions. I, that's my favorite time of the day is in the morning, even if I only have five or 10 minutes to sit and meditate or be still or listen to a meditation, it makes such a difference in my day. Huge difference. And then I wanted to mention about fasting. So I do the fasting too. And to me, it helps me realize um, that I can be submissive and dependent on the divine helps me realize that that's what can get me through that you know what i mean like it's easy to fill yourself for, with food and feel comforted that way that's an easy way to handle it but i think going without the food helps me have more gratitude and has um helps me rely more on divinity yeah, it's, it's hard some days, isn't it? But mm -hmm. it's very yeah, it's not always easy. Thank you, Debbie. That's great. Okay. The next thing is be mindful. Um, last night, I just wanted to cry because I was driving my daughter home. We dropped, we dropped off her friend and she's chatting, you know, my ear off in the car and I loved it. She's saying that, you know, mom, when I, when I get hormonal, you know, and I ask myself, What's the reason? There's no reason. You know, she says, there's no false belief behind that. And she just went on and on and on. I thought, she is so mindful of who she is, how she acts. And I was just so proud of her. Um, and she said, normally if I'm, I do something and I feel uncomfortable, I go back and I find a false belief. And then I think, why did I do that? I should stop that. You know, and she, she does. She's so smart that way. <laughs> so anyways, um, it's, it's awesome. But we, being mindful is just being aware. Um, and we need to be ready to record inspirations. And I learned this from Debbie Westcott, actually. She said, to, you know, have a journal ready next to your bedside and writing tools. As soon as you hear something, record it because you're saying, I heard that. <laughs> Let me record and then you get more of it. Um, and I love that, dear Debbie, you know, so that's, I say DJ sometimes, and then things come and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, God's talking to me and angels are with me and, uh, and surrounding me. And I feel, you know, not alone. I feel so connected to everyone and everything. It um, makes my life feel fulfilled and it has a purpose. So a part of being mindful is just being grateful. Okay. So I, I have my notes in my phone and then I have a little note book that I carry with me as often as I can and I just scribble it doesn't make sense to people uh, if they just were to read it but it makes sense to me and that's all that matters <laughs> so a wise man is a master of his mind so you work on mastering this intuition so you can gain more confidence and uh, as you surrender to the universe um, you know it'll work for you for your good okay so anyways uh, meditation is a wonderful way to be mindful um, so if we, I like, I like the elemental meditation uh, because of the Chinese people in the past, they, they harness their, their fire power and their, their um, you know, earth power and all these things inside of them, the air. And um, I really appreciate that because it's just really focusing on um, being aware. Okay. If you want to um, look at the mindful meditation, it's actually up. I haven't recorded it, but it's it's up on my website on a post. So that's it's awesome. So what do you think? You've got your notebooks ready and being mm -hmm. aware. <laughs> I think for my children, I like to teach them words to put with feelings. Um, yeah. Ron, do you want to say anything? So, yeah, I was just, 
about mindfulness, I, uh, one of my classes in college um, was all about this and I had never really understood what that meant until I took that class. And, you know, they talked about being mindful, eating mindfully, you know, when you're eating something, think about where that food came from all the way from the beginning, who planted it, who took care of it while it was growing, you know, how they harvested it. And it just makes you more grateful for that food or whatever. And it also helps you not to overeat because you're, you're eating mindfully and you're thinking more about, um, you know, where that food came from than just stuff in your face or whatever. <laughs> um, but then they talked about, you know, meditation and being mindful that way and how to really connect with your mind and your heart and your spirit and all that. So it was very interesting because I had never, I mean, they were using words that I'd always known, but giving a different meaning to them, you know? And so it was, it was really, really interesting. <laughs> and just like, just like that talk, Debbie, that you gave us the other day, you sent to us, um, you know, she was using all the same, she was explaining the same terminology about being mindful and about uh, positive affirmations and all that without using that language. But that's what she was talking about, you know, and it's, something we've known all our lives, something we've been taught all of our lives. And, you know, sometimes we just don't recognize it uh, for what it is. But anyway, I don't know where I'm going with that, but <laughs> it's, fine it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's good to just look at it from different angles and you have a great understanding of what it really means. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's not always easy to meditate and be mindful. I found lately that my mind is so scattered that I can't even... I can't even focus on something for five minutes, you know? So it's something you have to practice and really, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. work on. Yeah. Um, and then if I do focus on something for too long, I just fall asleep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm being uh, meditative or mindful either. <laughs> <laughs> That's not meditative. <laughs> So I actually worked with a few people lately and uh, we worked on um, being mindful. So I had, I didn't realize, but I had them, um, they were going to many di different directions and just have a hard time just doing one or two tasks. And so what we did was list out all the things that you're doing, you know, and then I realized that they're, they've got half a course here and half a course there and a book here and, uh, you know, a, this and that, a volunteer. And it's so many things actually. And so when all of the switches are on in your head, of course, you're not going to be mindful. So you really have to allow yourself to switch off as many things as you can and then only switch on the switches that are necessary for this time because there's a season for everything. You can be everything, but that has to wait and that has to wait until we accomplish this first. Um, but you declare to yourself, I just say to myself, okay, this, this is part of me or part of the development that has to wait. And so I physically put things away saying, look, I can't have five books on my, my nightstand. <laughs> that has to go away. I'll work on this one only. So, you know, as soon as you declare that, it switches off. Yeah, and I think if you have a lot of things on your plate, you know, sometimes you can't help that and you can't just drop things. But you can, you know, for the next 15 minutes, I'm focusing on this one thing. Yeah, and prioritize. Have, or two hours, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have a notebook, that you can write inspiration down in if while you're working on project a a brilliant idea for project c comes to your mind you can write that down and say i'm going to take care of that later and finish project a for that time for yeah. them or whatever then yeah. your first house is the house of mm -hmm. yeah but you're not jumping back and forth every five minutes because i feel like a lot of days that's what i'm doing i'm just jumping back and forth every <laughs> yeah and you have to allow for quietness Sometimes we, we allow the, the music to be on, the TV to be on, and everything else to be on. And we don't realize that it's just taken our energy and our attention. Because our brain is hyper aware of things that are happening around us, whether we know it or not. Yep, that's true. Yeah. And the other thing about being mindful, we can actually... Um, you know, choose something and you, you can delegate to some of the things. I realized that some of the things I don't have to do and I thought I had to do. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's awesome. All right, and the fifth thing is acting. Um, <clears throat> so if you can act quickly uh, to the inspirations from the divine, uh, you know, it'll help solidify and reinforce your intuitive muscles and power. Um, so I like to call it active faith, doing active faith, because as soon as you have that inspiration, you jump on it, you do it, even if it's something little um, towards uh, something bigger, it's still, you've started it, okay? And you make room for miracles to happen every day when you act, um, because you're inviting more, more downloads. Okay. So anyone have anything to say? I just, this just came to my brain. I had to write it down that intuition is our spiritual muscle. We have to exercise it. Uh-huh. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Nurture it, exercise it. Yeah. Yep. It'll keep coming more and more. It's, it's so awesome. Yeah. So And it gets stronger. It does. It does. And I feel like, you know, some of the biblical stories, um, you know, when God talks to people and he gives them instructions, I mean, like, how did he tell Moses, you know, this oil and this oil and this oil? <laughs> Unless Moses' ability to connect to God is so powerful, he can hear specifics instead of, oh, a good fuzzy feeling. Fuzzy feeling doesn't right. say, get this much cinnamon, get this much frankincense into that. Yeah, so that's cool. So in conclusion, I feel like it's, it's awesome. My twins are very intuitive and I love watching them, um, almost like reading each other's minds. So just a couple of weeks ago, Madison, the youngest twin, she got up and she started making lunch and she made a lot. And I said, Madison, that's a lot of food. And she said, no, Genevieve will be hungry when she wakes up, you know. And a few minutes later when she was done, Genevieve wakes up and she's like, I'm hungry. You know, <laughs> I'm all, <"Wow!" laughs> And so here's a meal already done for you. I know you're going to be hungry. Um, so it's just awesome. And like I said, couples, you know, being together for so long, you feel like sometimes who, who started where and uh, where do you start, where do I end kind of thing. Um, so with friends too, sometimes you feel each other without even knowing, just sending love to each other without even having to, to connect and even texting. I just feel love for my friends and I think this is so cool. I just, I know where she is at and I feel like, you know, I'm just praying for her, whatever it is that she's going through. So anyway, it brings you a great joy and satisfaction and it helps you have a more fulfilled life. So that's why I, I think this is important to talk about. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Beautiful. Does anybody want to add anything? All right. I'd like to thank Jade for sharing with us about the power of developing your power of intuition. I think we've got a lot of really good applicable things there. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who is listening to this podcast as well. And um, yeah, unless anybody has anything they want to add, we'll go ahead and close up. All right, we'll stop the recording. Yeah, so good. Thank you, Jade. Thank you.